Small group leaders, welcome to week six of our time together in the book of Matthew. We are looking at Matthew chapter 5, 17 through 20. This is kind of smack dab in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. We just finished the Beatitudes. Jesus is talking about who is blessed in the kingdom, why are they blessed in the kingdom. And uh, our portion of scripture that we're looking at together uh, this time in week six uh, revolves around the law of God as it is presented in the Ten Commandments with Moses and the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, uh, as we know them. Uh, that is where the, the law resides. That's what the, uh, the Pharisees would have read. That was the Bible they would have been familiar with. Uh, would have been the Torah. And so anytime Jesus is speaking about the law, he's not just talking about the Ten Commandments. While that is certainly uh, what we think of when we think of the law, uh, he's talking about all of it, every jot and tittle, as he says. And so in chapter five, Christ is talking about our relationship with the law. Um, This portion of Christ, really his greatest sermon is dripping with this gospel reality and this promise uh, that he has come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And so that puts us in a spot as Christians where uh, we are to not trust in the law to make us righteous. We do that in Christ because Christ has fulfilled the law on our behalf, calling that his active obedience. Uh, We know about his passive obedience on the cross uh, when he went as a a lamb led to the slaughter, as we're told in scripture. But his active obedience was actually him keeping the law on our behalf. And so it's as if we have kept the law. So now we have this relationship with the law as Christians uh, where it's not gone uh, because it's not bad. The law is actually good, right? It came from God. And so we are in this position where we need to really define our relationship with the law. And so that is what Christ is uh, is really teaching at, about here in this passage uh, when he talks about the commands of God. Um, we are given the law for uh, a multitude of reasons. John Calvin, theologian uh, of Calvinist fame, uh, says that the law has three uses. Uh, One, it is a mirror. It shows us our sins. So we look at the law and the law shows us uh, that we can never keep it. Uh, So that's the first use of law is that it's a mirror. The second is that uh, it is an officer, uh, meaning that it restrains sin. Uh, Much in the same way that if a policeman is behind you while you're driving, you tend to slow down, even if you're not speeding. Uh, The law kind of does that. It constrains evil in the world. And thirdly, um, it is a guide. So it's a mirror, an officer, and a guide that shows us how we are to live and actually points us to Jesus. So we see our sin in the law. The the law points us to Jesus uh, because Jesus is the only one who could fulfill the law. Jesus kept the law on our behalf. That's a promise that he made to us. Uh, And he has now, uh, he has kept that law. And because of that, we are hidden in him. And it is just as if we have kept the law ourselves. Uh, Heidelberg Catechism, uh, question one says this. uh, And the the answer to that is that, uh, as if I had never sinned nor been a sinner. And so we hide ourselves in Christ who kept the law perfectly for us. And so we cling to Jesus and now he fulfilled the law for us. And now Jesus points back to the law and says, this is how you follow me. So this is what he means when he says that he didn't abolish it. He came to fulfill it. Because first, to fulfill the law uh, means that you satisfy um, the demands that God made. And so the wrath of God for those who broke his law is now satisfied in Jesus keeping that law for us. And because we are connected to Jesus, God is now satisfied with us. And so uh, pleading the blood of Jesus on our behalf, uh, pleading to to make what Jesus did count for us. Uh, that's how we're safe from the demands of the law. And so that is what uh, Christ is talking about here in this chapter and our relationship with the law. Uh, it can be a little confusing. Uh, we know that. So if you have any questions at all, please reach out to me. Uh, reach out to the discipleship director on your campus. Uh, email any of the pastors. We'd love to talk to you about this. Uh, so we hope that week six goes well for you uh, and hope that you find this video helpful.